I am really excited because today I have six pairs of running shoes and we are going to be doing a running shoe try on haul for dudes. I've got some New Balance, some Adidas Under Armour, I got a Mizuno pair. We're going to be showing you these out of the box and then I'm going to try each one of them on and give you my thoughts on if I think they're worth checking out over on Amazon. Do me a favor though, before we get started, please hit like on this and maybe even the subscribe while you're already here. I do these types of videos and other health and fitness videos several times a week. And then I am also going to put in the description down below a link to each one of these shoes over on Amazon. That way if you see one that tickles your fancy, you can just copy or click the link down below to make sure that you get to the exact shoe that you want over on uh, Amazon. So uh, let's get started checking out some running shoes. Let's start with the Under Armour HOVR Hover Infinite 3s. Now their big selling point is that they actually have a chip of some sort in them that allows you to, when you're running, you can connect it to your phone, specifically through a, an Under Armour app, and it'll track your route for you. Now for me, that's not that big of a deal and not that much of a, a, a selling point because I take my phone with me all the time anyways, and I'm tracking through there and also with my watch. So um, I really don't care about that. And so if it's a little bit higher price, which this particular shoe, depending on the size and color, can range you from about 120 up to about $140 maybe give or take just a little bit. If the price is inflated because of that, I don't, that doesn't really mean much to me. The shoe itself is pretty nice. I mean, you can see here kind of how it looks. Uh, it's got the mesh here at the top and the inside. That's kind of what we're looking at in there. But good sole here. One of the things it does feel like is that the sole is a little bit heavier plastic, a little bit tight. Of course, it is a new shoe, but that's how it looks sort of out of the box. Now let's do a quick try on. So sometimes I try on a pair of shoes and my foot just glides into them like they were meant to be in the shoe. These shoes did that. These are comfortable. I was a little bit worried that the price might be inflated because of the chip in it that tracks your route, but I don't know. These are extremely comfortable. A couple of things I definitely noticed. Lots of support back here on the heel. Feels really good on the heel area. Through the, uh, the, the toe, I'm wearing a 13. This is true to size. Nailed it. Uh, there's no crowding or anything here on the shoe area. One thing I do notice, it's a little bit tight here on the outside of each side, but not tight in a constrictive or uncomfortable way, but it feels tight like in a support way. I really like the way these fit. I'm really glad that I got these. They are sick. Love it. I don't know if I would use the app, but I'd probably try it out just a couple times just to see if it's worth it, but even without the tracking. Um, I love these shoes, so definitely a good pickup. Okay, now we're gonna try the Mizuno Wave Rider 24s and put that away. Now, I didn't know, or I should say I'm not familiar with Mizuno as a running shoe. I primarily think of them as like a baseball type shoe, but I actually like the way that these feel a lot out of the box. One of the things with this I noticed immediately is it just feels lighter than the previous shoe. Um, and it's also sort of got the same mesh. A lot of these are going to sort of be built the same way. Here's the bottom of the shoe if you want to take a look at that. And the, the shoe itself is a little bit more flexible out of the box than the last shoe was as well. And so it'd be interesting to see how that holds up whenever, whenever I'm out on the road and doing some running. Let's take this out here just so you can kind of get a glimpse of what the inside looks like. Nothing too fancy there. So this shoe is going to run you depending on the size and the color, of course. Uh, this one at the time that I picked it up was $100, so you're going to give a little, have a little bit of give and take there depending on size and color. But um, I really like this shoe out of the box. One of the things I'm noticing, though, is the back of the shoe definitely has, it's very, very tight here on the back where the heel is at. And I know a lot of these are built this way to try to keep your heel locked in while you're running, but uh, very excited to try this one on. So let's see how this fits. Okay, Mizuno, what you got? Um, I am pleasantly surprised with the Mizuno shoes. Couple of things right off the bat I noticed. One is it definitely felt good putting my feet into these shoes. Just the immediate first sort of reaction was like, wow, these feel really good. The soles, uh, the insoles um, where your feet actually go in are, have a, quite a bit of cushion. Now, if you like a more firm shoe, this may not be the one. It, there's a lot of cushion on the inside of these. So just a heads up on that. But the shoe itself, whenever I walked over to this position, it just feels like it naturally uh, propels me forward. Um, these are really nice shoes. I am shocked at the Mizuno, how these turned out. Here's from the side as well. Of course, the underside, the actual soles. 
um, and I didn't even tighten these up very much. They just feel really good. If I was at a shoe store and I put these on, I would be done looking. So another surprise, the Mizuno, very cool. Okay, now we're gonna do the New Balance. This is the 1080 V11. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I primarily use the New Balance 860 V11. I have not tried these on, very excited to do so. This is the Fresh Foam version. You can see here that it's got the, uh, well, it doesn't actually say, oh, here it does. It says it on the side, on the, the sole or the bottom part of the shoe. It says uh, fresh form is also, it says it here on the tongue of the shoe. Now, one of the things that's a lot more uh, uh, different from here, the 1080 from like the 860, for example, is the width of the actual sole itself. There, this is a much larger sole as far as the shoe itself goes. It's about the same weight as the previous. I'm a little bit leery kind of interesting the pattern of the sole here on the side almost matches exactly the pattern on the bottom you can sort of see the curvature here on the bottom of the shoe uh, i'm excited to try this because i like the 860 v11 so much let's hope that these hang just as well here's the inside of the shoe now these are going to run you uh, these are actually the, i think one of the most expensive on this haul depending on of course size and color i think i got these for about 150 dollars for the, for the uh, V11, the Fresh Foams, you're gonna find that's about the average price point. Um, but again, I've loved the 860 so much, I have five or six pair. So and if you love them, you love them. So uh, really excited to try these on, especially in the yellow. I've been wanting some yellow shoes for a bit. So let's try these on. And the yellow New Balance comes through. So I was a little bit skeptical. The reason I waited so long to check this particular model out, I love those 860s so much but these are much thicker as far as the height of the actual uh, sole there. And I thought, you know what, I don't know if it's gonna make me feel taller, if it's gonna feel weird because it's so much more there, but these feel absolutely fantastic. I might like these better than the 860s. A couple of things to note, a lot of padding on these as I'm stepping back and forth, I can feel the give on my heel area. Um, in fact, my brother tried something similar to these and he did not like how much give that it had. I do like that. Just a heads up on that, that they are a more give type of shoe than, than they are sturdy and, and stiff. A um, couple other things to mention too is one of the things I like about these New Balance, uh, all the versions is they don't put a lot of material here on the sides, whether it's the inside or the outside or the back. When you're putting them on, they feel very, very thin, but they are very comfortable and they really do a good job of supporting around the entire uh, ankle area and back here around the heel. It's got, of course, the little lip here in the back, which gives you, I guess, a little bit of support whenever you're moving forward. The mesh feels great. The shoe is not heavy, but somehow feels like it supports better than maybe the 860s do. So I shouldn't have waited so long. I love them and I love the yellow. So these are super cool. Okay, these are the Adidas Ultra Boost CRDY, and these are the second most expensive. These I picked up for about $130. Of course, size and color dependent can change the, can change the price. Um, so well, that's kind of nice. It comes with an extra set of, of, um, of shoelaces there. So right out of the box, a couple of things that I noticed with this particular shoe. One is that it is a very tight shoe. You know, that Mizuno, as soon as I got it out, I was able to bend it quite easy. This one is very, uh, very tight, very stiff. Not necessarily a bad thing. I like some of the stuff, the little inlays here on the side, some sort of a plastic. And this has a similar back heel to the, um, to that New Balance uh, that we just saw, which is a much higher heel curvature, giving some extra support here. Again, about $130 for this one. It feels like it is a, uh, maybe a, a shoe that has more parts to it as far as material. It does feel a little bit heavier, not too much, but just a stiffer shoe overall. But it feels it feels nice. I mean, now one of the things I don't necessarily love is that the sides of the shoe right here, you can kind of see how they come up. Um, I just don't like the way that these attach, the shoelaces attach from side to side. It feels a little bit cheap. It, it, it may be some sort of a leather, but it almost feels sort of plasticky there. But there's the inside just for reference also. There's the bottom of the shoe. It's got the same kind of gap that a lot of these other ones have. It's also just a kind of a plastic, but a thick plastic, so I don't think it's gonna break. Let's give these a shot. Let's try these on and see how these do. Okay, so whenever I pay more money for a shoe, I expect it to feel good as soon as I put it on. It should just have like a ooh, wow type of factor. These are the second most expensive uh, on the list, I think. 
and or at least they're definitely up there and while they are unique uh, while I do like the way that they look and I do like the way that they feel they don't feel great to me you know one of the things that's interesting to me is this back how it's got the um, the curvature out it seems like it's curving too far out I'm getting almost no support I guess whenever your foot would go forward like this it would give you some but it just feels like I've got too much empty space back here at the back of the of the foot and the rest of it feels good um, I mean the bend in it feels nice it feels like a good flexible shoe the style of it's a little bit different the I pointed this out whenever I opened it up the shoelace is actually kind of like a, a pull system here to you tighten it up by moving that up and down I guess that's why they give you the other shoelaces um, I'm on the fence about this one I think that these would probably feel better after some use uh, but right out of the box, uh, I'm not in love with them, but I could see myself growing in love with them over time. They do feel good. I just didn't get that wow as soon as I put them on. So these are the uh, other pair of Adidas I got. Okay, we've got the Under Armour uh, Charged Bandit 2. This is one of the more affordable options on the list here. I got these for about $90. That's about the average you're going to find for the price point. Uh, I love the colors here. I specifically went for the orange because... I just have been enjoying some of the bright colors as of late. Um, right out of the box, one of the things I noticed is that the, seat, the, the sole area, again, very very tight, not a lot of give to it, not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it feels a little more plasticky, uh, the sole itself does, than some of the other ones. I know that they're all sort of a rubber, but this feels just a little bit, maybe not as well made, which might reflect why it's a slightly cheaper shoe. Again, not necessarily bad. I like the design overall of the shoe. There's the heel just for reference. This one does not have one of those wild gaps underneath it like some of the other shoes do. But uh, you know, at $90, much more affordable price point. I actually like a lot of the other material around the shoe itself. So let's try these on and see how these fit. All right, so I didn't even bother to do the shoelaces all the way on these. Um, so. I can tell I'm going to be sending these back. They are much more narrow than the other Under Armour that I tried on. Um, and I don't know. Uh, they're just not very comfortable. Uh, and this, these are the ones I mentioned earlier. I don't know if I mentioned it. The bottoms were very, very rubbery as far as the actual soles. And you can hear them on my floor. Just, I mean, it's a lot of traction. That's great. But these just are not very comfortable shoes. I can just tell that the outside of my feet and the inside of my feet are both more constricted than I would like. I mean, the, the heel area feels fine. Back here feels nice. Uh, and even the length on them up front feels good. But from a outside to inside, I'm not even going to bother doing the shoelaces on these. I'm not going to be keeping these um, decent shoes, but not my, not my style. All right, now we're on to the Adidas Run Falcon 2.0, by far the most affordable of all of the shoes. These I got for about $60. One of the first things that I noticed taking them out of the box is that this area here on the toe is a little more bendy. Not the sole being bendy, but this part feels more flexible than some of the other parts, which probably more means that it has something to do with the construction of the shoe in this area than it, it, anything else. I don't love that. I'd rather the sole have more bend to it and less through the, the toe of the shoe but maybe not a huge deal again only sixty dollars for these depending on your um your color and your shoe size it'll fluctuate a little bit but by far the most affordable on the haul i do like the design i do like the color there is the heel just for reference um, the heel feels a little bit more plasticky than it does rubber uh, i'm not sure how well it'll hold up i will say the actual bottom of the sole itself feels very rubberish it feels like this would probably have some great traction but the edges here feel very plasticky uh, there is the inside just for reference. So again, at 60 bucks, a stylish shoe. Let's see how well it actually tries on. So these are a little bit of a surprise. Um, I can tell immediately that they are not as good a quality as some of the higher price shoes. But being that these are the least expensive on the list, they are quite comfortable. I don't think I'm gonna be wearing these on long runs and I don't necessarily expect them to last a long time. But for $60 shoes, um, these are, I think, a pretty good deal. These are gonna be great for just more casual runs. And honestly, just for kind of wearing, even on just like walking type things. These are actually very nice. Um, the, the, the sole feels good, the cushion feels good. It's, it doesn't have as much cushion or, uh, sorry, as much support around the backside of the heel as I would like. 
but the length is good. Everything on these is nice. So these were a good pickup considering they are the cheapest on the list. So um, go Adidas. So look, performance is a big part of selecting a running shoe. How well it holds up on the road, on the track, on the trail. And obviously I can't do that kind of test here on a try on video, but at least I can give you some idea what it's like if you were to go into a shoe store and try these on, how, what would you pick walking out of that store for your next shoe? And hopefully this helps you determine and choose or give you some sort of guidance on what you're gonna choose as your next running shoe. Links are in the description down below to every single one of these shoes. Go and check them out directly on Amazon. And if this was helpful, please hit like on it, maybe even the subscribe so I can do more of these in the future. I love doing these types of hauls. So thanks y'all so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Peace out.